Hello everyone. Uh, in this lesson, we'll be discussing about the concept of cyclones and the different types of cyclones, that is tropical cyclones and temperate cyclones. I am Bhumika Saini. I have done my engineering from NIT Jaipur. You can follow me on Unacademy by following this link. Unacademy courses are free of cost, but if you like the course, you can pay an optional fee by following the contribute link on Unacademy. Now, what are cyclones? Cyclones are low pressure meteorological systems where the wind moves towards the center along a curved path. You can see it in this diagram that the winds, they are moving uh, uh, towards the center, that is the low pressure and along a curved path with increasing centripetal acceleration and the Coriolis effect towards the center. So Coriolis force is required for development of cyclone. So these are low pressure meteorological system and uh, they move uh, in anti-clockwise direction in northern hemisphere and clockwise direction in southern hemisphere. Okay. And these are secondary circulations that are produced by thermodynamic changes in the primary circulation that we'll discuss in the uh, next few slides. And these uh, cyclones, they transfer heat and moisture across the latitudes and thus they help in maintaining latitudinal heat balance. So there are two types of cyclones, tropical cyclones and temperate cyclones. Tropical cyclones in te uh, tropical regions and they are known by different names also like uh, cyclones, uh, hurricanes, typhoons, etc. Then uh, temperate cyclones also known as extra tropical cyclones. They are found in the temperate regions. Now let's discuss about tropical cyclones. So the conditions required for origin of tropical cyclones are first sea surface temperature should be greater than 27 degrees Celsius. Now that is why these uh, cyclones are limited uh, or, or the period of origin is limited between April to September because the sea surface temperature has to be greater than 27 degrees Celsius. Now minimum value of Coriolis force is required because initial torque is provided by Coriolis force. That is why these cyclones are not found in the equatorial region that is between 5 degree north to 5 degree south because there the Coriolis force like at the equator Coriolis force is zero right and these uh, cyclones they are intensified beyond 8 degree north and south because there is significant Coriolis force there now apart from this a minimum vertical wind sharing is required for tropical cyclones that's why they can't be formed in subtropical high pressure region that is 30 to 35 degree latitudes why because here the descending wind system is there okay the next uh, condition required is upper air anti-cyclogenesis -cyclo condition should be there that is needed to maintain low pressure over the ground. So when there is low pressure uh, on the ground, then uh, there is upper air anti-cyclogenesis conditions. Then apart from this, there has to be huge amount of water vapor above sea plus latent heat of condensation that is needed because it's the latent heat of condensation only that supplies energy to the cyclone, right? Now these cyclones, they are pushed by trade winds, right? And as they move over the sea, they are gaining water vapor and latent heat and they grow in size and become mature right and uh, apart from this intense convection and air currents in the center and converging winds at the periphery that is also another condition for uh, origin of tropical cyclones right so this uh, origin of tropical cyclones can be studied in different stages initial stage formative juvenile mature and discipline stage now let's study each in detail in the initial stage air motion is becoming circular, here isobars are ill-defined. Now in this uh, particular stage, only the central core is developed. You can see it in this diagram that this one is the uh, initial stage, here only the central core is developed and the winds has just started converging. Okay. Now in the uh, second stage, that is the formative stage, here eye will be developed and activity will begin around the eye. And in this case, you can see that isobars are becoming circular. So in the first one, isobars were ill-defined, but in this case, the eye has developed. This one is the core. This is eye. Then uh, gradually, these isobars are getting developed. Now in the third stage, that is juvenile stage, air convergence, convection, cloud formation, rainfall, they all become conspicuous because uh, in this stage, uh, this cloud formation, convection, you can see it in this diagram, the convection is taking place, then cumulonimbus cloud formation is taking place, the winds are descending at the periphery, so gradually it is becoming mature, okay? And in the fourth stage, the series of clouds are fully developed, uh, full development of eye and eye wall, right? Spiraling bands of clouds you will see, hurricane winds or winds of high velocity, they have uh, started blowing and this cyclone system, this whole begins to move over the sea surface. So this is the mature stage, okay? Where this whole cyclone is gradually moving over sea, right? Now the last stage in the discipline stage, when this cyclone falls on land, there is uh, the supply of moisture is cut off, right? And that is why uh, this cyclone gradually dissipates. 
okay but as it falls on the land it brings about catastrophic weather events like cloud burst and uh, high rainfall uh, up to the range of 100 cm within minutes that can occur right so uh, these are the five stages of uh, origin of cyclone now uh, cyclone uh, cyclone uh, in this we can also study the vertical struct structure of cyclone like uh, first at the center there is eye then surrounding it there is eye wall then there is inner ring outer ring and annular zone now this eye that is the core of cyclone here uh, 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 with uh, the maximum temperature is there now this is a zone of relatively calm condition why because the the air is mechanically subsiding here you can see it here in this diagram this is i right and here uh, the air is mechanically subsiding so this is zone of calm condition now the next one that is i wall that is surrounding the i this is the zone of maximum activity here uh, all the uh, ground convergence of winds and intense convection takes place rising air currents you can see in this i wall so in this zone you'll see thick cloudiness thunder lightning cumulonimbus cloud Clouds, release of latent heat of condensation, torrential do downpour, all these conditions you will see in the eye wall. This is eye wall, right? Surrounding the eye, there is this eye wall. Okay. The next one in this uh, is inner ring. Now, as we are moving away from the eye wall, uh, we'll uh, encounter moderate weather conditions. So, the wind velocity here is 60 to 80 km per hour. Rainfall uh, here will be due to cumulus and stratocumulus. Now, in eye wall, the rainfall was due to cumulonimbus clouds. Okay. And as we are further moving away from the eye wall, that is in the outer ring, further cool and calm weather conditions. Uh, will be there there will be sea breezes velocity gradually decreasing now velocity is less than 40 km per hour in inner ring the velocity was between 60 to 80 km per hour so as we are moving away from the eye wall gradually the calm weather conditions are prevailing right and here stratocumulus clouds may cause drizzle so in this in the inner ring it was rainfall in the outer ring uh, it is drizzling and in the eye wall it was thunder and lightning okay now the last zone that is annular zone it surrounds the cyclone and it's the peripheral zone where uh, subsiding cold and dry winds uh, they, uh, the, the cold and dry winds they are subsiding this is annular zone in the diagram right so uh, this one is i then it is i wall then inner ring then outer ring and the last one is annular zone where these uh, winds are subsiding okay now uh, the horizontal uh, components of cyclone they can be classified into four regions you can see it in this diagram these are the four regions region 1 region 2 region 3 and region 4 now in region 1 that is the layer uh, the upper layer that is uh, at an altitude of 10 to 12 km here mainly the winds are flowing outwards you can see it here this one is the region one the winds are flowing outwards right so this is outflow layer then region two this is upper tropospheric layer that is at a six to ten kilometer height here you'll see thick cloudiness spiraling bands of cloud diameter in the range of 100 to 150 kilometers so this one this zone right here you can see the clouds in the diagram and this is highly energized zone okay then the third zone that is middle tropospheric layer huge amount of latent heat is released this is also known as convective layer okay this one is also highly energized zone just below this upper tropospheric lake layer this is the uh, third zone right or uh, third region here you can see these clouds right then uh, the the last that is lower tropospheric layer here air convergence is taking place high velocity winds are there right and this uh, mass of air and water vapor they are lifting right in this particular zone and the diameter here is maximum 400 to 500 kilometers you can see this one is the re uh, the region 4 right so the here the diameter is maximum okay uh, the convection is taking place air convergence is taking place right so this is uh, the uh, about tropical cyclones now the uh, the devastating mechanism of tropical cyclones they can lead to sea swell that causes flood they can lead to coastal up uh, upsurges uh, here water is rising along the coast and again leading to flooding then it can lead to cloud burst condition heavy downpour hurricane winds that is uh, wind velocity uh, in the range of 120 km per hour then it also leads to lightning due to cumulonimbus clouds and that is mainly in the eye wall region so this is all about tropical cyclone we have studied about the horizontal components vertical components the different phases in which the uh, tropical cyclones occur right the initial uh, formative juvenile mature and discipline stage right and the conditions for the origin of tropical cyclone okay thank you